could you tell us a little bit about Degree Art, what you guys are doing, and uh, what your product is? Sure. So, um, in 2003, my business partner Isabel and I set up DegreeArt.com to bridge the gap between student and graduate artists and the art buying public. And we started off initially as a website, and very quickly realised we needed to have a physical presence, and we're holding shows all around the country. And then in 2007, we made the decision to get a permanent gallery space. So alongside the website, we also have a gallery in Viner Street, where we showcase the artists on our website in solo shows and group shows. Okay, and how does this work? Because we were talking earlier, you've got offline stuff and online stuff. How, how do the two work together? We spend our time going around universities and particularly in the summer going to the degree shows and to pick up the graduating artists and at the degree shows we start the relationship with the artists. Um, if they already have a collection of work that is ready to, to sell it will go onto the website and then over the sort of preceding months we'll build that relationship further with them to get an understanding of where they're going. If they then push themselves to the forefront with us and show us that they have huge talent and huge potential or that we can help them to get those things we'll work with them slightly closer in that they'll be invited to take part in group shows at the exhibition at the gallery um, and also possibly with other exhibitions that we're involved in and then depending on how that goes and how they present themselves how their work develops they will be invited to have a solo show with us which entails a two-week show specifically focusing on them and introducing them specifically to our clients. So you're helping the students get from nowhere to somewhere and build that relationship. How does it work for the buyers? What are your relationships with them? Well, the offer we have for buyers is that they can invest in the artists of the future. Um, I mean, we try and say you don't need to go to IKEA and buy a mass-produced print, although you can if you want to. However, for the same money, you can actually own a piece of unique, affordable artwork that there'll only ever be one of in the world. So you'll be able to hang that on your wall and know that your next-door neighbour plus the next three aren't going to have the same piece of artwork. And in addition to that, you'll get to build a relationship with the artist, so you'll essentially become a patron of the arts because you will be giving them the money that will allow them to make the next piece of work, and you can track their careers as they develop, and hopefully your piece of artwork goes up in value. So you are working at the consumer level rather than the really high... Well, I mean, it is truly emerging. This this really is the grassroots of the art world. But um, That's not to say that we don't sell to collectors who also collect very, very... I don't know, you've got high-end art, you know, it's, it's, this is something that people see as a valuable investment. Collect passionately. Yes. <laughs> and uh, what's your business model? How do you guys make money? Um, so we charge a sale on commissions. We charge less than a traditional gallery, but enough to justify what we do and the time and effort we put in. And we also do a lot of art consultancy as well. And how did you get into this? Where did, uh, where did the company idea start up from? Uh, you've got two co-founders, you're one of them. So, so uh, we founded the business in 2003 and I graduated from Goldsmiths then. I did art history but lots of my colleagues and, well, and peers were graduating around me with fantastic artwork. You have a big degree show when you graduate, brilliant stuff, you just see no reason why they're not going to go off and become the next Damien Hurst and then bang, August comes, they've done nothing and they end up working in a bar and because they don't have a lot of business training given to them generally in art school, it was there for us to step in and say look we'll do the marketing side, you make the artwork, you'll have to pull your weight as well and think about yourself as an artist and a brand but we'll go out and find the clients and present you to them and do the sale as you need it. And how much, do you know how much roughly volume in terms of, I'm not going to ask cash, but in terms of paintings that you guys I think, I think in terms last of art pieces. year we sold 700 pieces of artwork, roughly, it was somewhere around that number, and, um, but it can really depend, because obviously you can sell a huge painting for 10 grand, or you can sell 50 little prints for 150, so it's, it's quite tricky. <laughs> yeah, I think the volume's important though, certainly for the yeah, artist. Well, anyway. exactly, and something we always tell our artists um, is to know how many pieces of artwork they need to sell a year to make a living as an artist. It's very important, and I mean, I think it's the same for in business. You need to know what you need to be selling to, to make the money. <laughs> and you're able to give them advice in terms of what the market's looking for and sort of put maybe. Yeah, it's a bit of a uh, yeah <laughs> obviously, artists are very dependent. We, we can sometimes lean on them a little bit, but it's, um, it's quite hard. I think it's a very tricky one for artists to balance between being commercial and being a true artist, so to speak. But since the beginning of time, since they've been artists, they've always worked on commissions to make their money that allows them to make the true work and it's it's a point that they reach in their career when they're really able to say I don't need to make as many commissions now I can people want to buy what I truly produce just just as my art and you work on the commission side at all or? oh yes absolutely yeah I mean a, a big part I think for consumer market is being able to own something that they've commissioned and it can have a very special value because you can actually specify 
what size you want, what colours you want in it, where you want it to be of. Quite often we have mixed media pieces made, so yes, absolutely. <laughs> and are you are both the co-founders from art school or...? Oh yes, Isabel studied at London College of Fashion and she did a PR marketing and branding course, which was very useful. <laughs> so how's that going for you running a web company? What sort of challenges have you come up against? Web developers? <laughs> <laughs> we're, on our, we're probably on our fifth website I'd say now and it's always it's always a tricky one um, and it's with a website you could probably keep going forever it's deciding when you're going to stop and keep it as it is obviously developing within the site but you, you have to at some point decide you're happy with the model of the website that you have although it's for us it constantly needs updating we always feel that but I think I mean I think e-commerce allowed us to get the business to where we were today because we could get away with not having a physical premise and the costs that that entails for, for a while and until we had the money to do it. Have you got any advice or tips for people who are not particularly technical, getting into technical stuff, sort of points of reference or anywhere they should look to or anything they should look out for? And this is only again from personal experience but I'd say learn something. You can't, you cannot be a master of it all but we made the effort to go on a six week HTML course about three years ago and it was every Saturday morning for that six weeks but we knew the fundamentals so when we went to the developer and they were telling us it was going to entail X, Y and Z. At least we had an a understanding of what that meant so we didn't feel completely in the dark. It just allowed us to know what was feasible. I think that's a very good approach, a very, very good approach. How have you found uh, Astia um, supporting? How long have you been involved with, uh, with them and how, how has that worked for you? I think we've probably been involved with Astia for about four months now since we learnt this programme was up and coming and it's been very fantastic for us. Um, we've tried a lot of networking events and business networking and women's networking things and most of them we've run away with our tail between our legs and this is the way that this is approached is very serious, is not patronising. You really the information we've already learnt has been invaluable. Okay, excellent. All right, well, uh, thank you very much, Eleanor.